So what does your shower, this engine, and this coffee mug have in common? They all make use of smart materials! Rolling. So what is a smart material? No way! No way! I'll take a uh, piezoelectric materials for 300. Yay! Smart materials are a group of materials that have one major thing in common. They all have a property that can be changed by an external source. By an external source. Such as light, or electricity, or vibration, or temperature. The other major thing about smart materials is that those properties that are changed by those external sources have to be reversible. It has to be reversible. So overall, smart materials tend to be a pretty broad category. But here are five that we can take a closer look at. Piezoelectric materials, shape memory alloys, electrotextiles, electroluminescent materials, and color change materials. Movies and slide films are sometimes shown in the local shop. Manuals for further study are provided along with the films. Did you know that your car uses smart materials? Take this little guy for instance. This is a knock sensor. Knock sensor has a piezoelectric crystalline element inside of it. And what that does is whenever the car vibrates, like it normally does, it sends a small voltage signal to the car's computer. Now, if your car isn't working right, say for instance, it's misfiring, it's gonna make a different signal because there's gonna be different vibrations. And so when there's different vibrations, a different signal is sent to your computer and that means that there's something wrong with your car. Let's take a closer look at piezoelectric materials. So imagine that these glass beads are like positive and negatively charged ions inside the piezoelectric material. When a stress is applied to the ions, they shift and that shift creates a small voltage now this type of material is used in all sorts of applications. Everything from fish finders to airbag sensors. You may not know this, but your shower might be using smart materials. In some showers, you'll find what's called a nitinol spray. Now, imagine this is your cold water tube, and this is your hot water line. Now, the way a nitinol spring works is, normally, is covering neither. But as temperatures increase and it reaches a certain point to keep it from scalding you, the nitinol spring actually shrinks back down and starts to slowly cover over the hot water line. And then as the water temperature starts to drop again, it starts to expand and uncover it. So why does nitinol do this? Well, nitinol is a shape memory alloy. And with changes in temperature, it responds to those changes. Now this is actually has all sorts of applications. There are people using this to replicate the movement of muscles because of how controllable that movement is. It's used in the underwire of some bras. It's even used in sprinklers and school systems. Don't you hate it? When, it, when it's so cool outside that you, you can't use your phone without gloves on, but you also can't use your phone with gloves on. See, your, your body cr creates resistance when it touches the phone, and with thick gloves on like this, it, it blocks the resistance that your body normally creates. I wish they had something for this. Oh, thank you. Electro textiles. 
So electrotextiles, such as the ones in this glove, use thin strands of metal inside the fingertips. And what that does is it helps conduct. So when you use your phone and it's cold outside, it actually works. So another type of smart material are electroluminescent materials, such as the paint in this nifty belt buckle of mine. You see, the paint is a silver activated zinc, which means that when exposed to a light source, it collects that light energy. And then when you shut off the light, it actually produces a light of its own. It's kind of a greenish bluish tone. And that light keeps on going on until that energy dissipates. Check it out. This is Drew. And these are Drew's glasses. When exposed to the sun, Drew's glasses darken to protect his eyes. This is because Drew's glasses are made from smart materials known as color change materials. Looking mighty swell there, Drew. Now Drew's glasses are actually made from a subclass of color change materials known as photochromatic materials. Now what happens with photochromatic materials is when they're exposed to sunlight, there's a chemical reaction. And in the case of sunglasses, it darkens the sunglasses. Now, as soon as he goes back into a shaded area, after a moment or two, it reverts back and everything clears up for him. But photochromatic materials aren't the only type of color change materials. There's actually another type. Let me show you. So take this mug, for instance. The outside of this mug is actually covered in what's called thermochromatic liquid crystals. And what happens is, when you apply heat to thermochromatic liquid crystals, the crystal structure changes and reflects different light based on that change. Now, in the case of this adorable little mug, it shows us some cute little sea creatures. Now the next question is, how about the future? In many ways, smart materials are only just beginning to shape our world. Already they're popping up in all sorts of unexpected places. And the future potential of this technology and all the vast things it could potentially do is simply incredible. Imagine clothing that can sense the temperature outside and changes in the weather, and then adjusts accordingly. Or cars, when they get in accidents, all you have to do is apply a certain amount of temperature, a certain level of temperature, and they change back to the way they were before. The future of this broad group of materials is going to be an exciting one. But for now, that's our show. So I'm off to go test the heat transfer coefficient on this 45.